<laughs> okay. Uh, I'll now uh, move on to our final segment of the meeting tonight. And this is our plant table where we ask people to send in photos of anything interesting in their garden at this time of year. And I know a couple of people have sent in some photos for insects, of insects. So we might get, I'll ask Dan Clark to share his screen and if Dieter can just unmute himself by clicking on his microphone, um, you might want to chime in um, and tell us all about what people have managed to capture. So thanks very much, uh, Ralph, who's sharing Dan's PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, so over to you, Dan and Dieter. Oh, that's fantastic. Thanks, Rhonda. Yeah, look, my uh, internet connection has been a bit dodgy this week, so I've, I've sent the PowerPoint to Ralph. Um, can I just say quickly, I did Dieter's uh, entomology course in second year at uh, Uni of Sydney in 2008. It was an awesome uh, course, Dieter. Um, I still remember it. I still remember everything I learnt. Um, and if I could quickly say, I've worked with a lot of students uh, professionally from Dieter's lab. And they all speak very highly about him. So um, that's a credit to Dita. He's very popular with his students and, and gives them a lot of time as well. So I just wanted to throw that in tonight because uh, that's not said about everyone at Sydney Uni. <laughs> ah. so, <laughs> so well done, Dita. Uh, this came in from Karen Thorne, a beautiful flower in Carimbia. Um, and just to show Dita what I remember, um, if you're familiar with your insect groups, uh, these are the beetles. The beetles are a group all unto their own. Um, Coleoptera, they get called. Um, and beetles have got a pair of wings modified to that shield on their back, or I think it's an elytra, and Dita can pull me up for any of this. Uh, so to get a bit back on what I don't know about insects. But do you know what these are, Dita, these pair here? Yeah, you, you chose a good one to start with. I put it in the chat. They're, they're, they're fiddler beetles. I put their wiki oh. page in. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the school of thought about why they're, so, they're probably the most successful group of insects on the planet. They modified their first pair of wings to form um, the, these shields. These are larger, so their best flying wings are packed away and it means they can crawl everywhere, go everywhere. So I mean, beetle, beetles are reputed to be the most successful amongst the insects who are one of the most successful groups. So yeah, but they're, they're fiddler beetles. That's a very good start because I always feel like an imposter. <laughs> what about the Thank fly? You, thank, you for thank you for your kind words too while you're on. Oh, the, the fly. The I, fly. I, didn't see, I didn't see the fly. There is a fly there. there it is. I missed the fly. There we go. Well, there you go. Boring old fly. Yeah, fly, flies are in a different group again. They're in a group called Diptera. So all these groups have the P-T-E-R-A sort of uh, suffixed, I guess, on the end, which refers to wings. Diptera or diptera means two, two wings. And the, the flies have got the second pair of rings modified as these little um, gyroscopes, Dita used to call them, which uh, help the flies uh, fly and navigate. And if you think of how a fly flies, it, it's able to sort of whisk through the air and change direction so quickly. It's because of that second pair of wings that's modified to, to these tiny two little handles on its side. Yeah. That's a boring house fly, isn't it? I'm not sure I'm trying to respond to the chat now. I'll, I'll just cover it up. <laughs> um, I, 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 don't know, I don't know, but. <laughs> yeah, Karen should have swatted that one before she took the photo. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Karen's got a couple of photos here, just the European honeybees. So as Dita said, I'll try and be quick. The, the bees are in with the ants and the wasps in Hymenoptera. Um, and as you think about that, ants, bees and wasps, they all sting or they have females that sting. They don't all sting, but definitely we're familiar with the ones that sting. And the, uh, the, the females that sting you, they have a, a sort of ovary or an egg laying organ that's modified to a stinger. So all these female bees that are out harvesting nectar, they don't actually lay any eggs. The queen does that. So the bees have got this modified stinger and it's, it's the females that are hitting you uh, in the ants and the wasps and the bees. Uh, you probably know bees can only sting once, but wasps can sting over and over again and so can ants. Thanks, Ralph. Um, I'm not sure what you got here, Karen. Um, I couldn't quite make it out. Have you got any ideas? If Karen wants to unmute. Um, you got any ideas, Dita? 
I thought it was a reed bead. Ah. Oh. Native. I have that native bead card. To me, it was a reed bead. Mm. Mm. Well, like I said, I'm an imposter, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, that, that looks, I mean, it looks right to me. I mean, that's, I'll just. Nice. I guess the bottom line is, uh, you know, what the, the variety of insects that Karen's attracting with this uh, flower and gum, it goes back to Dita's point about what native gardens can, can do for insects. Um, and it's, it's great to see insects come to your backyard. It's, it's you know, especially when you get a diversity. Um, Karen sent in an ivory whip grevillea. Um, it's got this really big caterpillar on it. Can we go to the next slide, Ralph? Mm. Yeah, it's almost camouflaging into the stem. It's it's quite amazing, even almost the same colour and the same width. Do you know what that is, Dieter? I've seen it and I don't know the name. I'm just going to I'm just going to flick to another. I'm a, I'm a bit used. I, I tend to match them up to pictures. And yeah, that's all right. You can come back to us. You can come back to us. Um, Caterpill caterpillars are really notoriously difficult. Most nearly every classification is based on adult insects and there's very few things that actually focus on classifying the juvenile stages. Yep. Nice. How big is that out of interest? Is that, is that, is that fairly big? It'd have to be a couple of centimetres. Okay, yeah. The more they eat, the bigger they get. Yeah, that's true, yeah. What cracked me up the other day was watching um, Antiques Roadshow and um, you know, butterflies have got a positive sort of affinity, and but moths have a negative affinity, you know, because they eat your clothes and all that sort of thing. So this lady had an antique statue and the guy said, if it's considered to be a butterfly, it'll be worth 10 times as more than if it's considered to be a moth. <laughs> so I found that really interesting. Um, here's a stick insect from Karen on Leptospermum labigatum. You know, that's a common shrub on the sand dunes just behind the beach. But uh, Karen's managed to get this stick insect, which um, I think there might be a second shot, Ralph. There might not be, but I think uh, maybe I'll just put the one in. Yeah, sorry, I'll just put the one in. But uh, that's a good score there, Karen. Really nice one. Uh, uh, going back to that um, and what Dita taught me, they're, they're in a group all their own as well. The uh, Are they the phasmids, Dita, the stick they insects? Are. Yeah. There you go. They're ghost-like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a unique group of insects called uh, phasmids, uh, if you want to look those up. Um, praying mantis, they're praying mantis in that group. In the phasmids? Yes. No, they're in their own group, the mantids. No, different group, yep, okay. Mantids have got their front legs are basically designed for catching things. So yes. those insects are pretty cute and just eat plants and the mantids are brutal. They're fantastic predators. Yeah. Also, this, I found uh, that Grevillea caterpillars, um, I put a link to it in the chat. I'd... Yeah, yeah, saw that, thank you. Nice one, excellent mate, thanks. Oh. All right. Now we're moving on to Ralph's uh, suite. Ralph got uh, something on a baronia letifolia. What did you think that was, Ralph? It's an insect, Dan. <laughs> I can confirm, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll flick it to Dita. Hmm. There's two, there's one on each. Yeah. Right hmm. I'm, I'm having trouble making it out on the, on the, on the um, I mean, it, look, it looks like a type of, Mm. Is it only got the two pet, the two wings, the big one? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a fly or something. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting is the flies, the native flies are as important, if not more important than the native bees when it comes to pollinating. And they're really under, um, the marketing crew for the bees have got it covered and the, the fly people have just been left by the wayside. The flies are deceptively important. Can we think of flies the same way Dan, Dan mentioned, flies are being dirty, rotten food or like you know hanging around your compost your fruit but there's so much they do that's not related to that there's so many different groups of flies i'm sorry ralph i don't actually know what that is though i think it's a fly of some sort which is a very limited that narrows it down about whatever you know a couple hundred thousand species <laughs> nice one oh. now this is a beauty from ralph absolute stunner again we've got a unique group of insects the dragonflies and the damselflies 
Um, I think you called those Odonata, didn't you, Dita? Yes, well, everyone calls them that, Dan. Yeah. Odonata, there you go, yeah. Um, uh, Dragonflies, that's a beautiful shot, Ralph. Uh, real stunner. Um, I get a lot of dragonflies hanging around my pool in summer. I can't imagine the pool water is very good for them, but that's what I get. Um, yeah, that's that's fantastic, Ralph. How many shots did you take of that? Uh, a couple of dozen. <laughs> really good. You can see the two pairs of wings there. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I remember Dita telling us that they're a very ancient lineage of insects. Mm. They have been around for a long, long time. Yeah, well, you talked about the names before. With, they're, they're in the Paleoptera. So paleo meaning they've got the old wings, basically. That's, you know, mm. and, and they're, but they're, even though they're an ancient lineage, they're one of the most successful groups going around. They're so good at flying. And if you've ever seen them catch something on the fly, they're really good at getting their, their prey like that. So it's, um, yep, nice one. Uh, it's on Gravillia cerisia, the pink spider flower, the common plant in Sutherland Shire. Here's another one that Ralph's got with a carpenter bee. Uh, beautiful blue shot. Blue banded, I think. Blue banded? Oh, blue banded bee, sorry. Yep, there you go. Yeah, that's a common bee uh, you can get in um, uh, Sydney. Do they sting, Dita, the blue banded bee? No, look, no, they're, they're, I'm not, they're, they're really, I think no. they're... I think they're the gateway bee that we need to promote in right. Sydney. They are real. They're, they're they're not fussed about native, non-native flowers. They'll you know if you've got basil or sage, they'll go to it. In the right light, the blue is really stunning. I'll never. I remember having a student I showed one to who was quite disappointed that it really wasn't that blue. But they're really stunning little animals. They do a thing too where the males will all hang around together and roost together sometimes. Yes. Right? So you might yeah. find you know a dozen or four or five standing together, and I think they're a and they're really cosmopolitan. They're one of those ones that their nesting's okay in urban environments. They're not fussy about, you know, if it's a flower that I can get into, they'll go for it. They're, I think um, in terms of promoting native bees, they're the one, one of the ones we should really be adopting as our, our icons because they're, I mean, they're not that common, but they're beautiful. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Ralph. Oh, well, Ralph got this. Um next to a thysanotis, uh, a fringe lily. That's another beetle. That's stunning, Ralph. Nice one. What do you call those, Dita? Uh, thysanotis tuberosus, it's the fringe lily. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna just try, look, I mean, you know, this is, this is, this is, I'm gonna, I'll just have to squeeze. Um, how big was that, Ralph, out of interest? Uh, well, the flower is, Probably, I don't know, sir, two centimetres? Yeah, two, two okay. centimetres, yeah. It's reasonably big for an insect, isn't it, so? Yeah. yeah. Nice one. Yeah. And that was the underside oh, of it. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is Ralph torturing the beetle. Oh, that's beautiful. You can see, see that happened? iridescence that a lot of them have, yeah. I'm just so I'm looking at a, there's a, a stunning fly in the mm. chat that Joanne has posted too. Absolutely mm. beautiful. I mean, the metallic colours in insects. I mean, do plants do that too? Uh, not often, no. So you're basically all admitting the insects are better or just... <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, I'm going to get muted no, soon, aren't I? I'm going to be careful. Uh, I, think, I think we've got carpenter bees now. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna... That's a carpenter. Yes. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a different screen now. I've got to just... Um... Yeah. And Ralph, I thought this was Senna Artemisioides, is it? That's what I thought it was. Yeah, okay, beautiful. Yeah, that's that, that plant grows at JB. Where'd you photograph this? This was at uh, East Hills in the garden there. Oh, nice one. Okay. Well, that's Sylvan okay. Grove. Sylvan Grove, yes. Sylvan Grove, beautiful shot. Aren't they beautiful bees? Yeah. If you if you ever get a bee under a dissecting microscope, like you 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 know, hopefully some of you might with plants, um, they come up beautifully. You can see all the hairs, um, the eyes. They're they're really good to look at under a dissecting microscope. The insects are they're, they're really fascinating. It really brings the hairs up, and bees have got they got really interesting hairs. I think I took about forty pictures of those, and that was the best shot I got. I took very quickly. <laughs> Oh, it's a great shot. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. 
Uh, a caterpillar on hardened berger violacea. Uh, not sure what that is, Ralph. Sorry, have I got? Have we got the thing on the screen or Dan? Yeah, caterpillar. Uh, we got. You should have this. You should have the presentation. Yeah. Yep. No, I. I oh wow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm moving between screens and losing myself pretty quickly. I'm... That's all right. Have you found the caterpillar? No, I was too busy looking for that. That that it looked like a, a castanead beetle, but I couldn't quite. Um, mm. yeah, so I'm, um, yeah, I happen. I don't know what that is, but gee, it's got an interesting head. Mm, it does. Yeah. Nicer than our I think I think that's it for the insects. I think I, I sort of grouped them, but um, there might be one or two more. But here's a Hakea sericea that Ralph's growing. Uh, that's a really nice plant, Ralph. Uh, that, that's a good plant to grow, that one, and would be good for insectivorous birds, I would think, uh, with all that prickly uh, foliage. It's a local plant. Uh, grows in sort of sandstone and semi-sandstone areas, like shale sandstone. Um, Ralph's got this one growing really nice. Uh, axillary flowers with hakeas. That's what differs them to grevilleas. They, they put their flowers in the leaf axils. But basically the flower structure is the same. But you'd have to think that would be good for, for native insects too. Nice red stems. Ralph, I wasn't sure what this grevillea was. Uh, I'll put a few I shots think, in. I think it's grevillea arenaria. Yes, that sounds um, right. Brian, yep. Brian Roach from Wesley Nursery sells one called Spider Mist. Okay. It might be that one if you bought it from an APS event. <laughs> okay. It, it, it comes in a couple of different sizes. Yep. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Rhonda. Thanks. If, if, if it's Grevillea arenaria, I have seen this in the wild, uh, sort of in the Blue Mountains area and west of uh, Lake Burragarang there when I, I went in there for a, a threatened species survey one day. Um, normally in the wild, the flowers are sort of produced in, in pairs or, or a small number, sort of like you can see there. But uh, yeah, it, it, it did look like that now I remember. I think it's actually sort of related to the Mucronulata, which is our local one with the green um, yep. spider flower. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. You got that growing well. And you've got a Xantheria um, platyphylla, you said, uh, which is the Western Australian Xantheria. But Ralph's in action again, capturing um, a European honeybee, which uh, you... you tend to see in the bushland like this when they're flowering, you, you get a fair few European honeybees on them, but you probably get a lot of other things as well. Uh, Tony Porritt sending some plants. He's not with us tonight, but he wants to catch it up on YouTube. But here's Acacia fimbriata, the fringe wattle. It's one of the most spectacular, large sort of wattles you can grow. I think it's very popular and it can also be pruned into a very tight shape. Uh, I can brag about this one a bit. I've got two that are about to flower. They're nowhere near as stunning as Tony's, but uh, I'd say Tony's is getting a lot more sunlight than mine. Uh, but I've got two that I pruned last year. They're now perfect shape, about three metres tall, and they're going to be they're covered in bud at the moment, and I'm just waiting for them to pop. But uh, this is a really nice plant. One thing I'll add about this one, it can go weedy in bushland areas. If you grow it near bushlands, just watch for seedlings jump in the back fence and that sort of thing. Uh, I've seen it in parts of Sydney where it really needs to be controlled. There's um, too much of it coming up. And it's sort of not locally native to everywhere in Sydney. It tends to be found on naturally on creek lines and places like that. But when it looks like that, pretty hard to, to not grow. It's a beautiful plant. Uh, Tony sent in Grevillea Golden Liar. Uh, I, I, I sort of bomb out at these cultivated Grevilleas, but does anyone want to say anything about that one? It speaks for itself there. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely flower colour. Uh, it, it is popular with us. Uh, Phil likes to talk about this one. Um, yeah. Jeff, it, it'll get to about four metres in diameter, perhaps five. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a bit of a challenge where he's got it growing. 
thanks for that. Th that's, 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 that's a really good point. Yeah, we, we can overlook that sort of thing sometimes. Um, he, he might I'm keep it prunes, but if it gets that large, yeah, it's sort of got to get above the fence, I guess. To, to oh, it'll get to two metres, um, but yeah, it, it, uh, it likes a bit of moisture, of course, because it comes from Queensland parents, I think, but it's, uh, it's stunning. It flowers now. It's in, it's been in full flower. For months, my plant has Jeffy, anyway. Jeffy, 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 Jeffy. Yes. Nice Thanks so much for that. Uh, he's got Leptospermum and Pink Cascade. This is another good one for, for native insects and, and bees as well. Uh, I think this is a cultivar of, of what's now called Polygalifolium or what was called Flavescens. Uh, that's a common Sydney Leptospermum in sandstone areas, quite common. And the leaves normally have a little bit of a lemon scent, but uh, there's this cultivar pink cascade, which is uh, in the wild, the flowers are white and maybe slightly tinged with pink, but you've got a, you've got a, a really deep pink form there. Thanks Ralph. And Grevillea Wimpara Gold. Again, does anyone else want to speak to this one? Anyone grow it? It's very, yeah. it's very vigorous and very fast growing. So it's a fantastic filler plant, um, but it sort of grows so quickly that you end up having to prune it to control it. But it's also quite dense, so it's good for birds as well. Um, yeah. There are a couple of different colour forms. I think the nicer one is the one that is both has both red and yellow on it. Um, I think that, is that Wimpara gem? But yeah, but, but I think the multicoloured one's probably a little bit nicer, but I mean, it's, they're still really vigorous and fast growing. Sure. That two okay. metres by two metres. Yep, nice one. Okay, thanks Ralph. Uh, on to Des and Mari now. They're always pretty good with the photos. Um, Azantha rear just starting to flower here. So that's going to be quite nice. I'm not sure what, species that is Des and Mari, but I had a guess it might have been Glauca because that's a common one that's sold, but I could be wrong about that. Um, Dan, we were given that um, just when it was only very tiny. Yeah. We got it from a people at Kugel Park up in the border range near Queensland. And yes. they live right next to, and, and they, so it was from the border range area. Well, and, that, that that's habitat yes. for Glauca. That's that's a natural area for Glauca. Right. Possibly. Yeah. Right. And that's the one that I, I talked about last year that was four and a half metres. And now this has just started, you know, just within a week. We've got that. That's how big they've grown. But it got the, the one spike and it's about nine years old, I think. That's what it's up to. But it, it's so exciting. It just came and just zoomed. And even yeah. since I took that a few days ago, it's grown another... 12 inches wow. so um, yes it's oh it's magic yeah they're amazing the xanther is i mean after a fire you can you can see them with growth about you know half a meter long after three weeks or something yes. like that they're, they're quite amazing yeah. yes well yeah. this is what this is doing you know going really quickly yep good one that's that's beautiful mari uh mari's got grevillea buxifolia here the gray spider flower uh, that's one I'm trying to grow up in the Road Verge Garden. There's a, there's a real stunning specimen at the Sutherland Council Nursery outside one of the buildings. Uh, it's uh, a plant worth well worth growing. They seem to grow really well. Um, they sort of look better in gardens than they do in the bush, The what I've seen in, in from ones in gardens. But uh, a local Sydney species on the sandstone. Uh, it's a really nice plant. Good for insects, you'd have to think. Thanks, Ralph. Uh, oh, was there any other gravel? Oh, okay, I'll keep going. Um, kangaroo paw, uh, Anagosanthos. Um, you you know what Phil says about these? The the larger ones are easier to grow, and the smaller ones are really hard to grow. Uh, is Phil's opinion, uh, mm -hmm. which he always says. Um, but this this colour on that stunning, Murray. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. one, and no no signs of ink disease or anything like that. How long have you had that growing for? Well, I've had it quite a few years actually, and I moved, it was over, in, it's in the front, so it's shallow, um, but I moved it into another, because I was replanting, mm. um, 
and it's just taken off and it's near 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 the banks here, or one of the banks is but it's it's just really good because i've had the bush pearl that haven't lasted as well but this is bush um blush i think i i actually looked up the label and it's just really happy and healthy yes yes so nice well drained not in a thick area well drained north facing and it's and it's a happy chap there you go well there you go good on yeah it is, it is the sort of plant you can dig up and, and transplant. Yeah, but, but yeah, bush pearl, bush. If, you, if I can interrupt, bush pearl is one of the small one that does very good. It, yep. um, and it loves to be dug up and divided. It's one of the most successful you can do that. And it's only small growing, so it's well worth it. That's bush pearl. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Um, fantastic. Uh, I was stumped on this grevillea. Can anyone jump in and, and save the day? I think it's Bronwyn Eye, isn't it? I think yeah, that's well, how I, I had, yes, I, I had the, the name put on, I put the name on it because I found the label. Now, um, Carlo, I got that from Carlo Taliano mm. from the East Hills Group. But when we went to Sylvan Grove last year, the chap in charge there told me, um, it, you know, grows to really quite a tall bush. And Carlo's growing it too, but you want to make sure in Sydney that you don't have it all, you know, it's got it needs air around it and air to breathe. Right. So um that that's only I've only had it a couple of years. But it, it's it's lovely and it's nice in flower arrangements. Yes. So it, it's quite quite exciting just, you know, all these different grevilleas. Nice one. Yeah, it must yes. be in that that linear leaf group. Uh, when I sent this to you, Ralph, I was clueless, but I've worked out it's, it's Kimberly Gold. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Now that's a stunner. Absolute yeah. stunner, Murray. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Um, how long have you been growing that for? Well, that's another one that like I got that, I've forgotten who I got it from, about, about perhaps three or four years. But um, again, Carlo told me um, that, it'll grow to be quite tall, um, but it's only on, it's, it's only a bit, not very, you know, shallow. So I keep on keeping it, pruning it and tip pruning it and shaping it to only be a couple of meters. And it's when, uh, it, it looks, it's just about, about to just go boom. And it's so exciting. Anybody who walks past our place gets, you know, an earful about, Australian plants and, the, and, and you know, everything else. It's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sorry, I, I bombed down on that one as well. That was um, Lollipop. Oh, uh, okay. One of those. That one, that's not a good one in a way because it's not strong and the birds come and land on it and because of the weight and everything else they they're destroying the um the you know the undeveloped plant so i would not recommend that to anybody mm. but it's only young yeah okay nice one beautiful color that's it from me okay well thanks very much dan and thanks to everyone who <coughs> sent in those photos particularly the insects now